Welcome, everyone. All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We are very excited to have you here today for the first webinar of a series uh, that will introduce you to the UNVDH, the UN Big Data Hackathon. We're very excited to have you here. We have people from all around the world. Uh, and today's hack, uh, webinar will be to introduce you to the hackathon, introduce you to the organizing team, and also answer any questions you might have. If you register, then you might still have questions. If you're hesitant about, his, about registering, then maybe you register right after this. So let us get started. So before delving into this year's hackathon, we really wanted to highlight last year's uh, UN Youth Hackathon that happened over the course of three days uh, virtually. Uh, the theme was the impact on SDGs by the COVID-19 pandemic with a focus on people SDGs such as quality education, health, uh, access to work, etc. Um, it actually helped us have more than 33 countries represented. Uh, it was again virtual. We had one physical location in the UAE where uh, teams from Dubai were able to meet and discuss the hackathon in person. We were able to gather 80 teams and there were therefore more than 300 participants. So we really want to make sure this year as well is a success. Last year we had a lot of fun and we expect this year to have as much fun. Why would you want to participate in the hackathon very broadly before we go into the technical details? If you want to kind of learn about SDGs or if you're already familiar with SDGs and you want to utilize data to achieve them, then that's a perfect way to do it in the course of a very short period of time. You'll get to network with people from all around the world uh, with data professionals and data beginners as well. So it's a golden opportunity to do that. You'll also expose yourself to new techniques. You have no idea how much you can accomplish in three to four days. You'll learn so much in such a short period of time, and you might be actually become interested in research even more. You'll get to compete, and of course, good competition is always good. So if you win, you can win pretty nice prizes. We'll go over them in a bit. And finally, you'll learn. So it's definitely always a learning curve, even if you don't win anything, even if you are not able to compete to complete as much as you, as you would like to, you'll at least learn a lot from your peers and hopefully it will be a great experience for you. So now I'd like to give the floor to uh, Ronald Johnson because he's going to open up the hackathon. We have a great team of organizers and we'll go over them each one by one, we have people and uh, organizations from all around the world. But Ronald, if you may start, he's the Assistant Director and Chief of Data Innovation Capacity Branch at the United Nations Statistics Division and DESA. So Ronald, please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Umaima, and uh, a good day, good morning, good evening to uh, everyone uh, on the call. I hope you can hear me well. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, Ronald Jensen. I'm with the uh, United Nations uh, Statistics Division uh, in New York. Um, and besides, uh, as, as Umaima was saying, um, the, the many partners who are involved uh, in this. Uh, so besides the, the UN Youth Group, uh, we also have the uh, statistical community who is uh, helping here. And I just want to say a few words about that. So at the United Nations, uh, we bring together uh, all the national statistical officers from around the world. So also from your countries, the statistical office um, to collaborate and work together to make sure that we can compare statistics and indicators uh, across the across countries. Uh, so if you see statistics and uh, on the economy, the environment, trade, uh, population or, or, or other areas, um, those numbers uh, can be compared between US, South Africa, Brazil or China because uh, they have been discussed, uh, the, the methodologies and the definitions have been discussed uh, through the platforms uh, internationally uh, at the United Nations. Uh, so that's the, a little bit the context of of, of that. So um, within that international co collaboration, we have also started since, since about uh, about ten years ago uh, on uh, the use of big data and data science. So how how can we use uh, these kind of new uh, developments, um, be it satellite data or mobile phone data, or as you will hear about the AIS data? How can we use those kinds of data uh, safely? Uh, for the production of statistics and indicators uh, which will help to inform public policies, right? So in the end, we want to help policies that um, that address challenges on the economy or the environment or elsewhere um, 
so so that's the the official part where um, from from where we we come as a statistical community. Um, we have shown, uh, I think, uh, during the COVID pandemic, or we, that means uh, statistical officers uh, around the world, have shown that, that they can start applying new data and new data sources and new methods. Um, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, they have helped um, uh, to indicate uh, where people were moving, uh, where the mobility was. Uh, through, the, through the use of, uh, of mobile phone records. They have also been indicating where, where vulnerable populations were. Uh, this is through a detailed uh, population and census data. So that, so that help could be uh, addressed uh, quickly. Now, what we want to do with a hackathon to come to that, uh, it's a great opportunity and we want to get all of you involved to see in one way or another uh, if your team uh, could help to find new and creative solutions uh, to to the many challenges that we are facing uh, around the world and in your own countries currently. Uh, so we, we know there are high energy prices which makes everything expensive. So cost of living becomes a problem for, for many households. Uh, food supply and, uh, and high food prices become a, a, a problem around the world. Uh, we know climate change is, is a problem and, and causes many challenges. Um, in the environment as well and um, specifically also we like to address the sustainable development goals and how we can still help uh, to uh, to to um, move that forward the agenda so what we are asking for your teams is um, it is to see how you can have any kind of of solution to that and um, in the last last year and the year before we we did a hackathons and the last year winner was looking very specifically on uh, how to, how um, how we could better understand the um, the vulnerability of households or um, during the uh, or as a as caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and they specifically were looking at this uh, in Uganda so it was um, a, a specific solution with new data sources um, and to to help understand some part of of a challenge and how to overcome that um, the year before, we used uh, the AIS uh, vessel tracking data um, as input to measuring uh, emissions by maritime exports. Uh, so the winning team developed an application for that, uh, where we could um, see all around the world what what, what the estimate of uh, of these emissions were. Two examples. Uh, we hope that uh, during this new hackathon, uh, all of your teams will also uh, participate in this. Think about that. We will make data sources available, um, and uh, we've got many partners here uh, in this uh, hackathon to to help uh, collaborate on this. And I will give back to Omaima to further introduce those uh, collaborators. Thank you, Omaima. Thank you, Ronald. Uh, so I'll give the floor to Abhijit to go over each and every one of our partners. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mima. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. I am Abhijit Matthew, and as you, as mentioned before, we have a lot of guests, partners, partner organizations that are helping, really working really hard to bring this hackathon to life. First of all, I would like to introduce to you some of the amazing people that have been working really hard from the United Nations Statistic Division, as given by the opening statement, uh, Mr. Ronald Johnson, and also other uh, individuals from the UNSD, like Ms. Jaye, Ms. Mar Mr. Maki, Mr. Clarence, Mr. Calroy, Mr. Bogdan, Mr. Sean, and from the United Nations Center for Training and Development, we have Mr. Daniel Hope. All of them have been working really hard, supporting us, guiding us to bring the hackathon to life and organize the hackathon. We also have the host organization, one of the host organization, BPS Indonesia, Badan Pusat Statistic Indonesia, or BPS. And from there, the team, Mr. Moshamad Ramzi, Mr. Setia, Ms. Atliza, Mr. Maulana, Mr. Cheryl, Ms. Anna Fatriani, Mr. M. Yunus, Ms. Rupiki, Ms. Sylvia Arini, Ms. Kiki, and Ms. Nori. The team has been working really hard to make sure the hackathon comes into place because it is also happening parallelly with the International Conference on Big Data. So also happening in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. So the hackathon will have sat, uh, 
on-site satellite locations both in Indonesia and the other regions hubs as well. And I would like to invite Mr. Mushamad Ramsi, the Director of Analysis and Statistic Development of Statistic Indonesia, to give his address and introduce to us a BPS Indonesia. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Mushamad. Thank you, Mr. Abid Matthew. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Uh, it is uh, such an honor for me to give a speech on behalf of Indonesia for introduction to UN Big Data Hackathon webinar. Hopefully, this message can provide inspiration or motivation for everyone to participate. My name is uh, Muhammad Ramzi. I currently uh, work as Director of Statistical Analysis and Development uh, at PPS Statistic Indonesia. As is well known, uh, data are gathered everywhere, uh, every second uh, in this age of globalization. As a result, uh, BPS works to adapt to change in technology and access to information by uh, creating big data ecosystem within the organization. At BPS, uh, one of my responsibilities is to ensure that we utilize big data as effectively as possible as one of uh, the potential source of official statistics. We utilize web crawling or uh, scraping data, uh, satellite image and mobile positioning data or other index to complete the official statistic and to strengthen the analysis. Regarding this year's UN Big Data Hackathon, uh, Indonesia is a great honor to be uh, to be the host country. We are uh, highly anticipating participants uh, to join the hackathon and come to Indonesia in person. The event will be held from 8 to uh, 11 November in Yogyakarta, where you can uh, enjoy various tourism afterwards. Yogyakarta is one of the most culturally rich regions in Indonesia, so uh, you can experience tourism for food, culture and scenery at the exact location. Finally, uh, I once again encourage all of you to come and join us in Indonesia, uh, especially in uh, Yogyakarta. Uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abid. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the 2020 UN Big Data Hackathon is also being hosted by the major group for children and youth, which is the youth group mandated by the UN and we have working with us uh, Ms. Omima, myself Abhijit, Ms. Camilla, Ms. Tori, Ms. Ona and supporting us we also have uh, Mr. Rufai, Ms. Erika and Ms. Aline. Uh, the team has been working really hard to make sure to organize and coordinate all of the uh, events in the hackathon, the webinars as well and I would like to invite uh, Ms. Ona to give a statement on behalf of the MGCY. Ona is also the Science and Policy Interface Co-Coordinator at the Major Group for Children and Youth. Over to you, Ona. Thank you so much, Chef I hope you can hear me okay. So good morning. Good morning, all. It's great to see so many happy faces here. So as I've just mentioned, I'm Ona Ambrosaite. I am a PhD candidate at Johns Hopkins University, and I'm also uh, one of the coordinators of the Science Policy Interface Platform at the Major Group for Children and Youth. So Major Group for Children and Youth, also known as MGCY, is the United Nations General Assembly mandated official space for children and youth to contribute to and engage in intergovernmental and allied policy processes at the United Nations. So the mission of MGCY is to act as this bridge between young people and the United Nations system in order to ensure their right to meaningful participation is realized. So we do so by engaging communities of young people in the design, implementation, monitoring, and review of sustainable development policies at all levels. In order to effectively and meaningfully engage in the UN, MGCY facilitates and conducts a number of activities in areas such as policy and advocacy, capacity building, youth action, and knowledge. 
So the Science Policy Interface Platform, also known as SPI, was created in 2016 to strengthen youth policy priorities and practice in sustainable development by equipping them with tools to drive evidence-informed, context-specific, fit-for-purpose, and impactful change through science, technology, and innovation. So SPI can take different forms, one of which is data for sustainable development. This is a truly excellent way to allow young people to participate in science policy and STI mechanisms within the UN system, which was really the driver behind the creation of this data-specific focal point cluster within the MGCY SPI platform. The cluster is a truly excellent opportunity for young stakeholders to con help contribute towards the achievement of SDGs by using the most up-to-date uh, data analysis tools to eventually scale up their solutions for action towards SDGs, as is the purpose of the UN Big Data Hackathon we're launching. So with that, I thank you for your attention and over to you. Thank you, Una, for introducing the MGCY. Uh, next, we have the UN Global Platform Regional Hubs for Big Data. Uh, they are instrumental uh, in organizing this hackathon as they are the ones who are promoting the hackathon in all of the regions all around the world and making sure that regional participation happens. They are also supporting us in a lot of ways, organizing the hackathon, giving in input, inputs and in a, a lot of other ways. Uh, we have from the United Arab Emirates, the Regional Hub in the UAE, we have Ms. Rene, Ms. Rua, Ms. Aisha Khalid, and from the regional hub in China, we have Mr. Brian Gao. From the regional hub in Brazil, in Latin America, we have uh, Ms. Patricia, Ms. Andrea da Silva, and from Africa in Rwanda, the regional hub in Rwanda, we have Ms. Therese and Mr. Samuel. Uh, we have, I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, Her Excellency, Ms. Hanan Ali, has informed us she won't, wouldn't be able to come join the meeting, but she has sent us a video uh, to give a statement to the participants of this meeting. Uh, Her Excellency, Ms. Hanan Ali, is the acting director at the F Federal Competitiveness and Statistics Authority, the FCS, FCSA, in the UAE. And Umima, could you, yeah, could you just play the video? Greetings from the United Arab Emirates. I would like to express my appreciation to the organizers and hosts of today's webinar, the United Nations Statistics Division and the Statistics Indonesia, BPS. Thank you for hosting us today. Our regional hub represents our constant manifestation of our capabilities for the acceleration of the field of data sciences by providing access to data and leading technologies creating a conducive environment for fostering talents in advanced data is critical to monitor the SDGs. Therefore, focusing on improving the efficiency of AI and big data utilization is important. In the United Arab Emirates, we strongly believe on the importance of enabling programmers, data scientists, coders, and young individuals to create a better tomorrow. During last year's edition of the UN Youth Hackathon, we witnessed the powerful impact of enabling data enthusiasts. Teams from all around the world came together to collaborate, share knowledge, and leverage the power of technology to unlock the immense value of data. The excitement and enthusiasm shown by all participants was unmatched. The passion they had for using data to create a better tomorrow, not only for them, but for our global nations, left us all enlightened. One such a group amazed us with their extraordinary bravery, enthusiasm, and passion towards using and developing their knowledge for the good of our global community. Despite their young ages, Maryam and Fatma, aged nine and 13 years old, proved to all of us that future generations are more than equipped with the tools of determination, fascination to conquer challenges. The young girls worked hard on a project that analyzed the death caused by COVID-19 compared to other diseases to allow us for the exploration of innovative solutions. 
This reflects just how aware they were at such a young age of the global pandemic. Another group as well stood up as an inspiration. We were lucky enough to meet the talented professionals from France that were crowned as the first place winners. They used their knowledge as data scientists to help us understand COVID's impact in Uganda's household, which proves once again that with passion, impact is possible. I am confident that there are many upcoming talented out there to help derive solutions to create impact globally. Therefore, today, I am honored to invite you, whether you were a student, a professional, an expert, or a data enthusiast from the, other, from the Arab region or based on other parts of the world. Please join us on our journey towards a better tomorrow for all. You have a say on your tomorrow. Make it count. Your interest, participation, and significance a place on the role of data is your tool to make an impact. I wish you and all participants success in finding solutions to the world's greatest challenges. And I can't wait to see your passion turned into innovative solutions that will inspire generations to come. Thank you. That was very inspiring. We would love to thank uh, Her Excellency Ms. Hanan Ali uh, and uh, the UAE team for setting this up. That was incredible. Uh, thank you. Could you just go back? Um, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Brian Gao, who is the staff of division at the UN Global Platform Regional Center Management Office in China, uh, also the regional hub in China. Uh, so I would like to invite Mr. Brian to give a statement on behalf of the regional hub in China. Uh, over to you, Mr. Brian. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. And uh, I'm Brian from China Hub. Firstly, I'd like to uh, make it brief and introduce the hackathon in Chinese. So, first,我想请大家来自亚太地区的统计大数据人才参加联合国大数据的黑客松比赛。那么黑客松比赛呢,是展现这个统计大数据技术,发挥大家才能的这么一个舞台。同时黑客松比赛也是全球的这个统计社区
hopefully both the Chinese and uh, all the other participants from around the world. Next up, we have uh, Ms. Andrea Denise da Silva, who is a professor at the National School of Statistical Sciences, IBGA, in Brazil. And she also leads the regional hub for big data in Brazil. Uh, I would like to invite Ms. Andrea to give her statement on behalf of the regional hub in Brazil. Over to you, Ms. Andrea. Okay, thank you very much, Abdi. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Uh, as Abdi said, I am leading uh, the regional hub in Brazil, the United Nations uh, regional hub for big data in Brazil that serves the Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, so I will try to say a few words to my colleagues in the region. I, I will do as Brian. I will speak the, uh, a bit in Spanish, a bit in Portuguese, that are the two main languages spoken in the region. I hope not to mess up everything, English, Spanish and the Portuguese. I will try to do that. So here it goes. Uh, buenos dias a todas e todos. Es un placer estar aquí para invitarlas y invitarlos a participar en el Hackathon de Big Data de las Naciones Unidas. Uh, Big Data es una oportunidad para mejorar las estadísticas oficiales y con esto mejorar también uh, las políticas públicas y eh, principalmente el monitoreo de la Agenda 2030 de Desarrollo Sostenible. Uh, no obstante, uh, nuevas fuentes de datos, como es el caso de Big Data, aunque estén muy bien testadas antes que se pueda uh, utilizarlas. Y es en esta área uh, que uh, los, ustedes pueden contribuir muchísimo. Entonces, esperamos que lo hagan pero también disfruten y aprovechen la experiencia. Buen día a todas y todos. Es un placer estar aquí para convidarlos y convidarlas a participar del Hackathon de Big Data de las Naciones Unidas. Big Data es una oportunidad para mejorar las estadísticas públicas y, y oficiales y con eso mejorar también las políticas públicas y permitir mejorar uh, el monitoramiento de la Agenda 2030 de Desenvolvimiento Sustentável. No entanto, novas fontes de dados, como é o caso de Big Data, precisam ser muito bem testadas antes que se possa utilizar para fazer políticas públicas e monitoramento de ações na área social. Uh, e é nessa área que vocês podem contribuir muito. Uh, então, esperamos que façam, que o façam e que também aproveitem a experiência uh, para os que estarão no Brasil, no Rio de Janeiro, em novembro, uh, o IBGE vai sediar Hackathon Satélite, que vai acontecer pessoalmente na sede do IBGE, na, na, nas instalações do IBGE. É, as vagas são limitadas, então uh, uh, serão assinaladas por ordem de chegada. Uh, dessa forma, encorajo a quem pretende participar pessoalmente uh, fazer a sua inscrição quanto antes. Uh, e como to para todos e todas, e, e, e desejamos uma ótima Hackathon e que se divirtam também, além de muito aprendizado. Obrigada, thank you very much, muitas graças. Up to you, Abdi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea, for reaching out to the participants in Latin America. It's wonderful to see a lot of all of the regions being represented here. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, next up, we have... Uh, Umayma, could you just... Yeah, we have from Africa, the regional hub in Africa, from Rwanda. Uh, we have Ms. Therese Umana the Director of Data Revolution and Big Data at the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda. Uh, Ms. Therese uh, represents the regional hub in Africa, the UN Global Regional Hub in Africa, and I would like to invite uh, Ms. Therese to give the statement on behalf of the regional hub. Uh, thank oh, you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yeah. My, my my name is Teresa, as he, he said. I'm from statistics office in Rwanda, uh, but I also work at the program management unit of the UN Big Data Regional Hub in Africa. So the mission of the hub is mainly to help member states in, Af in Africa to effectively use and apply appropriate data science and tools and techniques 
to provide incredible and insightful statistics. So uh, this huge volume wide diversity of data which is generated on daily basis by uh, uh, different systems, ATMs, scanning devices, road cameras, sensors, mobile phone, satellites, social media, and so on, uh, which is normally referred as to big data, requires new tools and methods, but also young innovators like everyone today present to be able to analyze them to for new insights and solutions which are near to real time and much more granular to be able to inform decision making for sustainable development. So today I would like to congratulate those from the region who have already registered to participate in this hackathon, but also encourage those who have not yet registered to do so because this is a great opportunity to improve and expand your analytical skills and also your professional network. I would also to to uh, to send a word of encouragement to the French speaking community from Africa. Uh, je m'appelle Thérèse uh, du Bureau des Statistiques du Rwanda. Je, je travaille aussi à l'unité de gestion du programme du Centre régional des Nations Unies sur les mégadonnées uh, en Afrique, qu uh, qui est nommé Big Data en anglais. C'est la mission de la plateforme et d'aider les États membres à utiliser efficacement des ressources de données alternatives en appliquant les outils et les techniques de sciences et de données appropriées pour leurs utilisations en fait de fournir des statistiques crédibles et pertinentes. So, euh, ces énormes volumes et cette grande diversité de données générées quotidiennement par les systèmes, les guichets automatiques, bancaires, les appareils de numérisation, les caméras routières, les recensements, les téléphones mobiles, les satellites et les médias sociaux communément appelés mégadonnées en anglais, c'est Big Data, nécessitent de nouveaux outils et des méthodes, mais aussi des, des innovateurs comme vous pour les analyser afin de trouver de nouvelles idées, solutions qui sont presque en temps réel et beaucoup plus granulaires pour les créer la prise des décisions et pour le, déve le développement durable. Je tiens maintenant à féliciter ceux d'entre vous qui se sont déjà inscrits pour participer à ce hackathon et à encourager ceux d'entre vous qui ne sont pas encore inscrits à le faire parce que c'est une excellente occasion d'améliorer, d'élargir vos compétences analytiques ainsi que votre réseau professionnel. Merci et bon courage. Over to you. Thank you so much, Therese. Uh, we are also, we would also like to introduce to you uh, the other partners from ONS UK, the Office of National Statistics UK, Mr. Mr. Eric Debin and Ms. Alison Bailey. We are also partnered with the Asian Development Bank. Uh, Ms. Cheryl and Mr. Eduardo has been helping us a lot. Uh, from Stats Canada, Mr. David, Ms. Stephanie Gotez and Ms. Catherine Stevenson has also been helping us to organize the Sackathon. Uh, we would like to invite Mr. Eric Debin the Technical International Program Lead at the Office for National Statistics UK to give a statement on behalf of the organization. Over to you, Mr. Eric. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Good, good morning and um, thank you very much for this uh, for this introduction. So um, I, I really want to highlight the three points why this is so important for us. I mean, international collaboration is, is key for ONS, is key for our partners, is key with all the NSIs we work with because we really see this as a way to, to share knowledge and also to support uh, the modernization of statistics. Technology plays a big part in that. Uh, my, my, my second point really is very quickly that at ONS we are working very closely with Cardiff University and we are also looking to host a hackathon 
at the same time as well, we also meet in Indonesia and also across the world at different hubs. And we really fee- see this as an opportunity for, for particularly for the UK, for, for young data scientists to really group together and, and do some, some very interesting, exciting work on some, some data sources they possibly haven't seen before. So we really see this as an encouragement. And, and thirdly, I mean, this is a, it is a big thank you. As we just heard from a high accident from um, United Arab Emirates, it's like it's to encourage each other. It's to work together and actually to see how we can break through from some areas that we can do jointly far better together. Um, so I, I want to encourage everyone to, to, to join up. Uh, I want you to reach out. Um, to everyone that we can make this a real key event and that will be marked as a success for 2022. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Eric, uh, for those inspiring words. And uh, we would like also to hear from uh, Mr. David Evans, who is the innovation leader and strategist at Statistics Canada. Uh, if you're there, over to you, Mr. David. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today in both official languages of Canada. Bonjour à tous. Merci de me donner l'occasion de prendre la parole aujourd'hui. Au nom de Statistique Canada, nous sommes heureux de nous associer pour la première fois à l'ONU dans le cadre du marathon de programmation de l'ONU sur le méga donné. À StatCan, nous utilisons des données pour produire des statistiques qui aident les, euh, les Canadiens à mieux comprendre leur pays. Nous fournissons aux Canadiens des renseignements essentiels sur la population, les ressources, l'économie, l'environnement, la société et la culture. Nous nous associons au gouvernement, aux entreprises et aux particuliers pour les aider à utiliser les données afin de surveiller l'inflation, de faire face aux perturbation sociale et économique, de promouvoir la croissance économique, de planifier les villes et les routes, d'ajuster les pensions, de mieux comprendre les inégalités sociales et de soutenir l'emploi et les programmes sociaux. Nous collaborons avec les partenaires à travers nos pays et à l'échelle internationale, internationale pour encourager l'utilisation responsable des données afin de faire la lumière sur les problèmes en cours, sur la durabilité, sur l'équité, la diversité et l'inclusion, le bien-être. Statistique Canada a un engagement inébranlable envers la confiance, l'utilisation éthique des données et la promotion de, des partenariats. Nous avons une culture d'innovation et d'amélioration continue, qui nous permettent de nous concentrer sur la création de valeur pour aider les gouvernements, les entreprises et les, par- et, et les particuliers de nos pays à prendre des décisions éclairées qui ne laissent personne de côté. Cette marathon de programmation est une excellente occasion pour les jeunes et les experts en mégadonnées du monde entier de rassembler des perspectives et des expériences diverses et de démontrer notre talent à mieux utiliser les données et les outils modernes. Statistique Canada est impatient de partager son expertise et de fournir un soutien tout au long du marathon de programmation. Nous espérons que ce sera la première de nombreuses années où les citoyennes et les résidents canadiens participeront au marathon de programmation et nous avons hâte de voir les idées qui en sortiront. On behalf of Statistics Canada, we are pleased to partner with the UN on the Big Data Hackathon for the first time. At StatCan, we use data to produce statistics that help Canadians better understand their country. We provide Canadians with vital information about the population, resources, economy, environment, society, and culture. We partner with governments, businesses, and individuals to help them use data to monitor inflation, navigate social and economic disruptions, promote economic growth, plan cities and roads, adjust pensions, better understand social inequities, and support employment and social programs. We collaborate with partners across our nation and internationally to encourage the responsible use of data to shine a light on ongoing issues, on sustainability, on equity, diversity, and inclusion, on well-being. Statistics Canada has an unwavering commitment to trust the ethical use of data in fostering partnerships.
We have a culture of innovation and continuous improvement that keeps us focused on delivering value to help our nation's governments, businesses, and individuals make informed decisions that leave no one behind. This hackathon is a great opportunity for youth and big data experts around the world to bring diverse perspectives and experiences together to demonstrate our talent in using data and modern tools better. Statistics Canada is looking forward to sharing our expertise and providing support throughout the hackathon. We are hoping this will be the first of many years that Canadian citizens and residents participate in the UN hackathon, and we look forward to seeing the ideas that come out of it. Thank you. Merci. Uh, thank you, Mr. David. That was really inspiring. Uh, so that brings us uh, to all of the regional hubs. Uh, the regional hubs have been uh, helping us quite a lot to organize the hackathon uh, with the help of also the ONS uh, UK, Statistic Canada, uh, ADB, ISDB and uh, BPS as well. Thank you. Uh, so the hackathon, uh, it aims at providing a platform uh, to data scientists, data enthusiasts and anyone who, who love to work with data uh, to develop their data science skills, to compete on a global platform with the global crowd and also learn from all the experience of being with peers all around the world. They would be given access to data sets they've never seen before or they maybe they didn't have access before. They would also be given access to state-of-the-art data analysis technologies to support them in creating solutions, creative innovative solutions that can help implement the SDGs or accelerate the implementation of the SDGs. Uh, it also supports youth engagement and evidence-based decision making as well so that policymakers also come into play. Uh, this diagram shows how the hackathon aims at engaging both data scientists, youth or no matter the age, as mentioned before, we had a team who with a participant as young as nine years old. So it brings an engagement of everyone around the world to use data as a tool to address the global challenges that has been coming up of the 21st century and also to help accelerate the implementation of the sustainable development goals. So now we're going to go over the tracks for the UNBDH. Uh, so this year we're basically combining both the 2020 and the 2021 editions of the UN Hackathon by having two tracks, a big data experts track and a youth track. So we'll go over the details and hopefully this will answer any questions you might have on the tracks. So the first track is the big data experts track. Uh, we do encourage you to refer to the 2020 AIS Hackathon to get more insights on how this actually went. We'll be sharing the slides right after this meeting for you guys to take a look at all the links. We actually linked um, the website over here. So for this particular track, we're looking for government officials, professionals and researchers with a background in data science, statistics, economics and social sciences. The goal here will be to utilize AIS data, so it's the automatic identification system data from vessel tracking in line with the team theme that will be revealed closer to the hackathon dates. Uh, we encourage people who apply to have some degree of familiarity with big data. You do not need to have familiarity with AIS data. It's totally OK to learn along the way, but we do pr like prefer for for you guys to have background in big data so that you can actually make the most out of, out of the hackathon. <clears throat> we'll be selecting 20 teams of three to five people and we'll try if you play individually to match you with people with different backgrounds so that we get diverse enough teams. But if you apply as a team, then please make sure you have people with different backgrounds. It would definitely help a lot uh, to make sure the hackathon is a success. With regards to the second track, it's going to be youth uh, track. So again, we do encourage you to refer to the 2021 UN Youth Hackathon details so you get a feel for what types of project the different teams worked on. So in that case, we're looking for data enthusiasts, young professionals or students that are 32 years old or younger. All levels in data science are welcome. All we want from you for both tracks actually is to make sure that you showcase your de determination and your motivation on your applications because we'll be again selecting roughly 100 teams of three to five people. You can register individually again. We can re uh, team you up with other people. Um, and again, all levels for the youth track are welcome. So do not hesitate to apply even if you're young, even if you know, you're not familiar with data science, you're welcome to, to, to try it out. 
With regards to the logistics, we'll have other webinars that will detail this further, but things to know uh, with regards to the location. So the big data experts will be welcome to join uh, the on-site event in Yucca Carta. So it's part of the bigger international conference on big data happening there uh, in November, or they can also attend virtually if, it, if they prefer not to travel. With regards to the youth track, it will be mostly virtual. However, if you live close to satellite locations, you can definitely apply to attend these locations as well. Uh, so for now, we have uh, Indonesia, we have Dubai and Rio de Janeiro. So we'll let you know further again once we select you if you are eligible to participate physically in these locations. Uh, the technology will be providing a Jupyter Hub online. You can also definitely use your own tools, whether it comes with you know Python R or Tableau, Power BI, SAS. Um, we'll be uh, uh, giving you guys access to a GitHub repo to deposit your work submissions and we'll communicate through emails, but most importantly, we'll create a Slack so that you can keep on interacting with other teams and also ask us any questions that you might have. Finally, with regard to the data sets, as we mentioned for the big data experts track, it would be mostly focusing on AS data set, which will be provided by the UN. We'll also provide you with other data sets as well as data sets that will be open source and specifically related to the theme. And for the youth track, it will be uh, data sets uh, related to the theme only. So this is like kind of a brief summary. Don't worry, like you'll have this slide to kind of take a look at it and we'll be giving more details in future webinars. Um, now it's your turn, Abhijit, up to you. Yeah. Thank you, Omima. Also, so we'd like to go over the timeline very quick. Uh, as you know, the registration for the hackathon started on the 15th of August. And uh, please make note that the deadline for the registration is on the 15th of September. We will also have a webinar before that on the 9th of September, uh, focusing more on youth engagement and climate action and using data, data to accelerate uh, solutions to in, uh, solve climate action. Uh, we would also have two other webinars which would mostly be focused on the participants of the Big Data Hackathon, uh, explaining the data sets and going into our deeper logistics of the hackathon. Uh, the webinar on the 31st of October, uh, a week before the hackathon happens. In this webinar, only the theme of the hackathon, the theme on which the solutions has to be based on, will be revealed. Uh, and as you also already know, I believe, uh, on the 8th of November, 2 p.m. Yogyakarta time, that is UTC plus 7, we will kick off the hackathon. And uh, from November 8th to 11th, and the hackathon submission uh, would be on the 12th, 12 p.m. November 11th, UTC plus 7, and all the winners would be announced by December 15th. Uh, for any details on updates on the webinars, you can use uh, the mailing list. It's also in the website. You can use that if you register it in, in the mailing list. We will update you with regular emails on any events and any updates. Uh, so please make sure that you go over the time zones in your own individual regions. Uh, I, I repeat, uh, it's UTC plus 7, 2 p.m. Yogyakarta time kickoff, and it would end at 12 p.m. Yogyakarta time, UTC plus 7. So on to the expected outcomes. Uh, as we've mentioned before, uh, you will be given access to a lot of data sets and through using the data sets and looking at the theme, you would be asked to create innovative analytical solutions uh, that primarily addresses or helps resolve some of the global challenges that the world has been facing recently and also to help achieve uh, the sustainable development goals. Uh, all the solutions should follow the theme and for both tracks, whether the big data track or the youth track, whether you're joining in on site from Indonesia or the other satellite locations or uh, you're joining virtually, you will have to submit a presentation explaining the solution. It can be a free, it should be a free format like a PPD or a PDF, uh, a video with a maximum length of 10 minutes, which should be a voiceover over the presentation. It can be or if any other method is also used, it's, you're free to explore and the coding scripts used in all of the solutions should also be submitted. So these are the expected outcomes. If you have any uh, doubt regarding this, you can also check uh, the expected outcomes and the outputs uh, that had been put up in the last year hackathon and the year before that. It's available in the website. Uh, some of the examples of the solutions, yeah. Yeah. 
so we'll go over the example. So just to give you a quick feel, and again, you can find uh, all these links on the websites that we put uh, in the presentation. So with regards to the Big Data Experts track, again, uh, please take a look at the 2020 AIS Hackathon. So we'll go quickly over to examples. So the winning team, for example, developed an interactive dashboard that enabled them to map the different um, CO2 carbon emissions around the world. Uh, sorry. Sorry, and unfortunately we won't be able to kind of showcase this video, but you can find it on YouTube. We put the link over here for you guys to um, take a look at it. Um, so they were able to basically use a machine learning algorithm to map out the carbon emissions worldwide, and they developed this interactive dashboard that enabled them to kind of zoom into the different regions and be able to showcase how much carbon emission was made. Uh, so it's a very great uh, source of inspiration for everyone to take a look at. It's a pretty awesome project, of course. Uh, we had another team which was an all student team within the AIS hackathon and that goes back to the fact that within the big data experts even though you're youth you can definitely apply to the big data experts if you feel like you have enough knowledge in big data so this team actually focused on the impact of COVID-19 on different um, indicators that were part of the AIS data so the commodities bulk carriers and trade countries and they put up together a really nice report that was kind of showcasing the evolution uh, within these different categories due to the COVID-19 pandemic so again, we encourage you to take a look at their work. Uh, we also put the presentation video as a link on the slides. With regards to the youth uh, track, we have three examples uh, so that you guys kind of get a feel for types of outputs that you can give. So one type of outputs, if you're very familiar with statistics and not so much with machine learning algorithm or advanced big data, you can definitely put together reports that detail um, some kind of analysis on the data set. So these are like real examples from last year. So as you can see, we had teams put together some nice presentations and nice reports, uh, looked at the different indicators that were as part of the data set. So that can definitely be one of the outputs that you can give based on the theme. Another type of output is dashboards. So we had a lot of teams that were very proficient with Power BI, SAS, or uh, Tableau, for example. So they put together some really nice, again, dashboards uh, on SAS over here. And this one was done on Power BI. And you can actually zoom in uh, to Damam City in Ar uh, Saudi Arabia and take a look at, by neighborhood, what is the um, access to internet like? What is the access to hospitals like? So it was a pretty interesting project and they did it in their, in their city. So again, Again, that's pretty inspiring. And last but not least, we had teams that went a little bit extra and developed machine learning algorithms for predictions. So the team sustainability, which we referred to earlier, they were able to predict the vulnerability of populations in different regions uh, in Africa, and mostly focusing in Uganda, based on surveys they got, uh, they, they were able to access uh, of farmers, for example. And then we had data rock stars who developed um, a pandemic score on the region that were able to kind of set an alarm if the score was too high, if for, for some reason the region didn't have enough access to education or health during that particular period. Uh, we put together a drive, again, that is accessible if you click on the link, that has all of these projects in details and you can take a look at them and get a feel for how they were able to hack their way through the hackathon last year. So hoping this was a nice snapshot. So now I'll give it up to Chawe so that we can go over some of the nice details of the hackathon. OK, uh, thank you, Omaima. Hello, everyone. So as for the rules of the participation, here are two main rules to be remembered. Number one, the use of private and copyrighted data sets is not allowed for any team. Number two, by submitting the proposal, contestants declare that the content submitted is their original work and creation and has not been presented previously in other events. So next, about the special prizes and certificates of the 2022 UN Big Data Hackathon. So in each track, which are use track and big data expert track, we would provide the following prizes. Firstly, outstanding team. This prize will be granted to the overall best solution. Secondly, best team of the region. Those prizes will be awarded to the best project from each region, including Africa, Europe, North America, Latin America, the Middle East and North Africa, Asia and Oceania. Apart from this, we will also have prizes of key contributor, which is for the most active team in the communication channels that provides help to other teams' questions and share additional data sets or insights, and best visualization, 
which will be granted to the team who provides an outstanding presentation of data in a visually compelling format. And we also have best pre presentation. This price will be determined based on the presentation skills of the team. Apart from this, we also have some special prizes for the use track, including most promising team. This will be awarded to the outstanding solution from beginner teams. All student team. This will be awarded to outstanding team consisting of all students. And the team award. This will be given to the outstanding solution developed by teams that consisting in majority of participants under 20 years old. And also for all teams that submitted the expected outcome in time will receive a certificate of the participation from us. OK, next. Um, I'm excited to tell you about the grand prize. The outstanding team will present their work at the UN World Data Forum in Hangzhou, China in 2023. This will give them the opportunity to present their project to a larger audience and obtain potential feedback from international experts. So for other winning teams, we would provide prizes of granting full access to the UNGPAS platform for one year, and we also provide further training, monitoring, and assistance from UK Data Science Campus for a specific project in three to six months. So if you want to participate or receive all the updates for the 2022 UN Big Data Hackathon, please register to the Hackathon with your team or individually. And you can also read about all the information about the Hackathon on the website. And we also encourage you to join the mailing list to hear about the upcoming webinars, registration deadline, and logistics. And the next part will be the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please let us know in the chat so that we could activate your microphone. Or maybe you can raise your hand so that we could give you the word. Because um, due to the time limit, maybe we would only answer like three questions. So are there any questions? Okay, I see one hand. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, I think you're unmuted. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Oh, good. Nishu, if you want to go ahead and ask a question, we're not able to hear you, but okay. you were unmuted. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Peter Popola from Nigeria. Yeah, I've registered with my team for Akaton 2022. Where will, be the, where will the outcome be out to know whether our team will be invited to participate? Uh, so the Peter outcome asked, of our proposal submitted. When should we be expecting? The outcome, you mean, like once it's submitted, what's going to to happen? Is that what you mean? I think um, what Peter's trying to get at is that once they have submitted their applications, obviously we are doing a selection um, on the teams, so they want to know when will, what date are they looking at when the applications will be accepted or rejected. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, so it would be on September 24th. Uh, we will send out by September 24th. You will know if you've been selected or not, and we'll let you know if you haven't been selected. OK, OK, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, my, my question is, I have a challenge registering individually. The online form um, has options for registration as for a team and inputs for um, details for team members. So how do I go about registering individually? Thank you. 
Yeah, of course, you just register on your own so you can select one as a as a team and normally we'll just give you one output and you'll just put your name and all the details. And after this, we will match you if we select your application, we will match you to other people who also applied uh, to a team. OK, uh, the, the the online form is giving inputs for team details such as the the um, team name, the project working on and the rest. Doesn't mean I should just go on and fill those information and proceed. Yeah, just fill it out as if you were playing as a team yourself. And then once we assign you to a new team, then the team name can be changed and the project can be changed as well. OK, so we, we, Thank we, you. we just want you to put together a nice application to show your motivation, even if it's not the final you know, thing you're going to be working on. All right, understood. Thank you. If there is one last question, so we've been having quite a few questions on the chat, we're trying to answer to them. But if there's one last question, otherwise I think we're five minutes past the meeting. So if there's one more question, please go ahead. All right, so if there are no additional questions, again, uh, we'll be sending the slides out uh, Right after this uh, meeting. One question, oh. I raise my Sorry. hand, but... Sorry, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, and good morning, everyone, evening or uh, afternoon. Yeah, um, I would like to know uh, regarding the age limit. Age limit, if within one team we have uh, like three people, one people more than 32 age, or yeah, more than 32, 32, uh, 32 uh, yeah, all. Uh, can we register as a young team or should we go for expert? I don't think I understood the question. Sorry, yeah, my question. My question is, is Age we limits. Have two, yeah, we have two two categories, right? We have expert and young. And for expert, we, we have people should can be more than 32 years old. Uh, for young, the age limit is 32 year old. I'm asking if uh, within the young team we have like uh, four people and two, one or um, two people have 32 year old, can we register as a young or not? So, yeah, Bijit, please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Mm, uh, so I think your question is if you have a team member who is older than 32, can he yes. register? Can they, yeah. Uh, so according to the rules that we're going by, uh, if a member is uh, over each uh, age over than 32, we're not allowing them to okay. be part of the youth category, but you are welcome to apply for the uh, big data category. Yes. Okay. So Thanks. the entire team has to be under 32 years of old age. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Hello, can I, can I ask a question, please? One last one then, yes, sure. Please go ahead, Chico. And thank you very much. My name is Shoko Bangua from Sierra Leone, West Africa. And I just want to know what are the main focus of this academy? And um, if it's, it's purely for science, for scientists, or it's, it is for all walks of life. So let me know, please. Scientists. Yes, so it's like, it's mostly like scientists, but we do encourage economists, um, you know, uh, people with social sciences background. So it, you can have different backgrounds. Like you don't need to have a science background, but you need to kind of be a little bit familiar with data and how to process data, analyze data, and all of these things. Yeah, if you have like a project management background, I think it involves some data because it yeah. has to do a lot of that has to do with data. My yeah. CPI process master's in project management, so I don't know if yeah. I may qualify for this one. I, I, th I think you can apply as such and maybe put forward your projects and then we'll see based on your application if you can map you to a team or there are people that have more data background and therefore, you know, together you can make a good team. 
Yes, yeah. I think the accountant also. I think they are the accountants. They are also yeah. requested because they are dealing with data and the statistics as, as a whole. Because doing project management, you can do statistics and other stuff. Yeah. So and accounting also is, is a require 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 um, subjects when you are in the university statistics. So I think by putting those information together with these people with this background, I think they will be able to do something as far as the academy is concerned. Yeah, thank you, Chico. We'll try to advertise it as such. Thank you so much. I think we have one last hand raised. Let, let's make this the last one. Uh, so Tony, please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Tony? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah thank you for your, your very, very good presentation. I'm Tony, um, I'm from Senegal. Uh, I have uh, two questions. The first question is that uh, before going through, I'm very sorry for joining uh, quite late. I don't know if during the, the, the beginning time you, you covered this part. I don't know. Can you uh, tell us uh, what is the, the criteria of selection for the candidate who applied for the, the part for the hackathon? I don't know if you, you covered this part in the beginning of your presentation. Um, yes. The second thing is that uh, I can, should I continue or should I wait for, uh, should I continue for the question or you should answer it? This end, uh, what yeah, what's, what's your second question? Yeah, my second question is that, uh, yeah, after assuming that we have been selected for participating in the hackathon, assuming that uh, our team was one of uh, for the best project or something like that. And uh, I would like to know after the hackathon, how do you uh, uh, support the team, the winner team? Uh, you mentioned that in the uh, platform, it will be participated in the 2020th in uh, Shanghai. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, let, me, let me answer to your questions and, and I, let's stop here. I Sorry, everyone. If, I don't know yeah. if that you have uh, any support for the team to win or uh, how to implement this solution they will present or they will suggest you if you yeah. get very well yeah. thank you for giving yes me the sure yeah it's only, okay so for the first question with regards to the applications uh two criteria is really the first is that you make sure you apply to the right track uh, based on your, you know, capabilities and also on your age for the youth track. Um, and the second thing is to put together a nice application. So we have, when we ask you questions about your motivation and why you want to participate, even if you don't have a background in data, just try to explain, you know, that you haven't done any projects, but that you're really interested to participate. So, of course, someone who took the time to put together a nice application and answer the questions will have a better application than someone who just like answered yes or no, you know? So that's really the, the, the main thing is to, to have a nice registration application. We'll select people as many as possible, and then you'll get to participate. And to the second question with the support, so the winning team will present their work um, during the UN Big Data uh, Conference in uh, Hangzhou in China in 2023. So we'll give more details on this later on. And there will also be access to a couple of teams to the UN Big Data platform and also to some project management. But all these details will give in future webinars. That's just like kind of an introduction. Um, and we'll give you more insights on this later on. So for now, focus on your application and then, you know, We'll, we'll let you know more about all of this. So go and register, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you very much for my cool. questions. All right, everyone. I, I think we're going to stop here. We're 13 minutes over time. Thank you so much for making this first webinar. We're very excited to have you on board. We sent a couple of items uh, on the chat, but please register to the mailing list because uh, by end of day today, we'll be sending out a mass email with the recording, the slides and additional information. And we're looking forward to seeing your names on the registration form. So go and apply. Hopefully we you're motivated now. 
all right thank you everyone